Hi, I'm Laurie Allred. Welcome to Inspired by Pinterest, where I browse around Pinterest looking for amazing crafting and home decor ideas, uh, ideas for everything under the sun, um, and bring them to life each week on an episode here on my craft channel. I am thrilled to share with you a fun project that I did with a friend of mine. I needed some wedding gifts and it's something, a pin I've seen on Pinterest for a really long time. I wanted to try it and it included a technique which today we're going to be talking about metal st stamping on metal or metal stamping. Um, you know, it's one of those things I've wanted to do for a while. Everything from the washer necklaces that you've seen people doing over the years to, you know, these spoons. I wanted to stamp on spoons. Well, first of all, let me tell you, I do have a pin board called metal stamping and flatware repurposed because since we were stamping on spoons I thought I'd look up some fun ideas using flatware so go check it out there's some really fun ideas and as always you can go to my blog allreddesign.net and I link to any pin that I reference here on the show and anything I mention um, that you may need to go back and check out so again this pro whole entire episode was um, inspired by this darling um, spooning idea that I found on a cute local store here in Utah called Wood Connections blog. And I absolutely loved it, fell in love with it, and I couldn't wait to do it. I was showing it to Christine McKay when I got here, and she thinks it should say ladling and use bigger ladles. So <laughs> she's funny. But she says after you've been married that long, you go from spooning to ladling. So <laughs> anyway, cute idea. I do want to warn you, though, stamping on spoons was probably one of the most challenging things I've done in a long time. And so I'm going to show you this next pin. It's from um, mocoloco.com. And this is what you're going to do with all the spoons that you mess up on, because trust me, you're going to have a lot. And um, they, they made these awesome light fixtures out of the spoons. It looks like a petal flower. So cool. Anyway, back to our stamping on metal. Well, one thing I learned right away is all metals are not created equal. Metals are um, softer, different metals are softer. So sterling silver is a softer metal, then guess what? Stainless steel. And of course, I'm going to the local thrift store and everything I'm getting there, 12 for a dollar, mind you, is stainless steel. It's a very, very hard metal and very hard to stamp on. So even copper, we pulled out some pennies and stamped some things on those, super soft. Those took the stamps really well. And jewelry blanks that you can pick up, these are just some fun washer type jewelry blanks. They take the metal really well, the stamps. So this first one idea I wanted to show you, they made some cute herb garden plant markers and it's just an Etsy shop owner, cute idea. I'm totally gonna rock that when I have a garden. <laughs> The next one, and you're going to want some tips and tricks on stamping on metal. This I went through a lot of different blogs. This is the one I enjoyed the most, happyhourprojects.com. She walks you through the basic process and just shows you some really fun ideas. And then think outside of the box, because, you know, I've done stamping on leather. Now, I will tell you those cute leather stamps are not made to stamp on metal. So you do need the kind of stamps that are made for that. So I have this really cool set. These are jewelry stamp, so they can stamp on metal. And I don't remember what company they're from. I think it's on the front. Let's check it out. Um, Vintage. So they have different fonts, really cool. Um, Impress Stamps does some really cool ones. These you, I picked up at a local kind of manly store, Harbor Freight, and um, really inexpensive. They had different sizes. And then these teeny tiny ones my mother's had for a while. I haven't used them because they're so stinking small. So, but I love the idea of some of the pins I'm going to mention. This cute one, a stamped spatula, and on it they just took an inexpensive spat metal spatula. I think this was from All Dollar. And they actually stamped on it, we flip and love you, and then gave them stuff, cookie dough and a hot mitt, or you could do pancake mix and a griddle. I just thought that was a really cute idea. So I'm going to try that. And then on the Idea Room, Amy did this really, idearoom.net, check out her blog. It's one of my favorites. She actually used the same stamps and stamps on the ends of wooden spoons. And I thought that was a really cute idea. That would make a really sweet gift set, too. You could just personalize everything. So back to why I did this. I needed a wedding gift for a cute friend who doesn't watch my show, but I know her soon-to-be sister-in-law, Lindsay, does. So anyway, this is for um, Mackenzie. And her and her soon-to-be fiancé or husband 
um, their names were way too long after I started this. Mackenzie and Marshall was not going to happen on the spoon. So I went for Mr. and Mrs. I figured that was generic enough. I did do on my spoons, mine and my husband's names because we're only four letter names. So that was easy. So um, when you're stamping on metal, you're going to want a metal block. Um, and I will tell you, this is a rubber. You can buy this in the jewelry section as well. It absorbs the hitting and the sound a little bit more. But I'm going to tell you right now, doing it on a wood table or a plastic table doesn't quite cut it um, in fact we had more success just going and sitting out on the back cement porch and doing it there because I had a really solid base um, eventually because we were having such a hard time getting the metal stamps to work on the spoons um, my friend's husband Chuck pulls out like a sledgehammer a little mini sledgehammer that I could barely lift and his anvil uh, was a railroad tie Worked awesome, but I know most of us don't have that. So just go outside on your cement, um, your porch where you have a really solid base. Um, so you don't want to be doing it. Or the floor probably is more strong than a table. So I'm not actually going to stamp. I've pre-stamped some of the things. And these little jewelry hammers they send you, not made for this technique. So I'm just going to warn you that because Amazon, when I purchased some of this stuff, sold this with the stamps. They don't work. You're going to want a heavier hammer. They do have a really awesome little short handled one I hear works great. I read a lot of blogs that said they loved it. So you're going to want those and then a, they, a lot of people suggested that you tape it in place which I found was super helpful on everything but the spoons. So you can tape the, that washer and I've actually already um, stamped mom in it. And so on the spoons the challenge we had is you can't really tape it down and you want to hit it as flat to the surface as you can so you have to be able to rotate your spoon. We even tried having someone hold the spoon. That didn't work so well because everyone was a little shy of getting hit. Um, I just found after a while it was just easier to take my stamp, place it where I wanted it, and kind of hold the spoon at the same time and just whack. And I will tell you if you can try and do it in one or two maybe whacks, one good whack. Um, if you don't you get what's called skipping or a, a kind of a blur effect doesn't look as nice. So that's why a, a good heavy hammer and a good surface. So be prepared to, you know, mess up a lot of spoons. I'm just going to tell you that. The other thing I found, if you're not holding on real tight and you hit it on an angle, these become projectiles. Almost took out a couple small children. So just be warned. So I, you know, we still had a lot of fun and I was able to finally get them to work. And again, 12 spoons for a dollar at the thrift store. I wasn't really heartbroken. Um, we're going to run them through the dishwasher because we're always out of spoons anyway so the kids can have it. So we just practice. The next step once you've stamped it you're going to want to do is make it dark so you can see and this is a fun technique. Uh, most They have some different inks you can use. Sharpie works great. I'm just going to color in where I stamped with my Sharpie and I'm kind of messy about it. I just want to get down in those grooves. And then you'll want a paper towel or a cloth and just some inexpensive rubbing alcohol. And we're going to clean that excess ink right off of there. So it just pulls that what you don't want on there so that you can see that. I'm going to so you can see that. So it goes dark. That's how I was able to get these to stand out a little bit more. Um, so that it, the writing stood out. So I love that technique. I thought that was awesome. Super easy. It's something, things I already had at my house um, so that we could get that to stand out. Now, a lot of people that I've shown this project to have asked about the boards that I use these on. This is just a um, piece of pine that I've painted. Um, I bought the cute finials at Wood Connection. Um, where I got this idea from. They have cute things. You can even go as far as doing like the wood base. Um, gluing those together and then you could put him right on there. Look how cute! So if you just want a piece that's going to sit on a shelf, I think this is a great way to go and it looks really cute and I tie some ribbon on there. Now I will tell you, I did want to mention the paint that I use. So you know the chalk paint and the milk paint's really popular. Um, I have a local gal here that mixed up these paints for me. It's from Shabby But Not Forgotten Distress Paint and I'll put a link on my blog. And she mixed these up. They have what's called a milk and a chalk paint base. So when I paint a surface, it still has that chalky fill. You can write with chalk on it. Um, but these will not go bad. Like milk paint, you have to put in the fridge or it'll go bad. I don't have time for that and I don't want it to go bad. So what I loved about these is a very little paint went a long way. So this color is actually this here. 
and then I wanted kind of that antique, more rustic look, so I sanded it down a little, and I'm too cheap to buy the really nice Annie Sloan wax. Um, so I have on my stash just basic min wax. This is an awesome new color espresso, and then a finishing paste. It's a paste finishing wax. Same thing, it's just a two-step process. You have to um, stain it and then go back over it with the wax, but I did that on both of them. And then a little tip for that is take a paper sack and rub over the surface to pull up any excess of this wax so it's not sticky to the fill. Nothing bugs me more than a, a piece that's been waxed and you can still tell it's kind of tacky. So use that. And this is about half the price. I think I spent $15 total on this and got the same effect as if I'd had those more expensive waxes. So I appreciate um, my cute friend for letting me feature her paint. If you're interested, check out the link on my blog. And give this a try. It's really fun. I'm going to do some other fun um, episodes in the future using my metal stamps and hopefully inspire you. And like always, you can go to um, Pinterest. There's so many cute ideas on metal stamping and be inspired there. So be sure to check out my bar board and my blog. And thank you for joining me. We'll see you next week here on my craft channel.